Hello guys, it's Tamisha Iman from RuPaul's Drag Race season 13. Today I will be recreating my entrance look. Why? Because that first impression is your lasting impression. So watch me go from this to this. Alrighty, we're gonna get started. What I usually like to do before I do anything is lay my eyebrows down. So come go with me on this journey to find Tamisha. <laughs> I take my glue stick and I push it backwards. Like I go against the grain when it comes to my eyebrows. Same thing on both sides. I go against the grain. Then I take a brush and I try to organize my brows going in their natural direction. I have kind of like one or two that are wild. Then I go back over it again. So there's a smooth surface. I don't have a lot of eyebrows, but the three I have, they don't cooperate correctly. So I give them time to dry slightly. <laughs> My next step is I have a sealer. The sealer comes out like nail polish, but it's not nail polish, it's actually a liquid bond. My eyebrows are a three step process, really four. So now I'm going to turn this blow dryer on and I'm going to try to lock these brows down. If I use this blow dryer, it's gonna kill y'all. So now I'm going to add a third layer of cream to lock in the brows. And I normally just pat it on a couple of times just to blend in with the other layer of liquid. At this point, I add a powder to lock them down. Just pat it on there, trying to get it in all of the crevices. And I match firmly, so therefore, see like that right there. Mishaps will happen, it's just how you go about them. So I'm gonna fix that. So I take the adhesive and I repeat the step, and this is called surgery. Take the powder, secure it, voila. Slight save, nothing major. Now, pay this no attention because it doesn't look like it's my complexion, but trust me it is. So now, I'm getting ready to add my foundation. I use a total of four foundations. When we are doing makeup, we tend to build our skeleton first. Then we apply a different shade to build our skin. Then we'll put everything on as far as powder to make everything even tone. So it may look a little crazy, just bear with me. T-zone, but I created something called the O-zone. Oftentimes people will only do this part of their face and it may appear one color. I always go around your mouth because you want to be even tone. And you was like, how does this gonna work? Let me show you. This is drag. You have to build a color. Yes, it is not my complexion, but trust me, by the time we finish, it'll be my complexion. This is usually building my skeleton. This is my bones. These are my bones, rather. I'm sure you're saying, what in the is going on? This is drag, 101. Now, that's my light foundation. I have to add my dark foundation. So the whole objective is to get my shaded areas. You have your T-zone that usually highlights your area, but then you have your other area that's your natural shaded area to make you picture perfect. And I usually go over the powder to even tone and to actually make my brows disappear. So I have a smooth canvas when I actually start creating my eyebrows. So this is the last foundation that I use. It actually helps to bring my complexion together. So my first foundation is for coverage and my last foundation is for color complexion. The reason why I do the steps that I am doing first is because I have been in the industry for 30 years and being in the industry for 30 years as a makeup artist, 
back in the day. This is how we were taught to apply our makeup. Not to knock the new generation, I understand. It allows them to get to their process faster. But to me, my eyes are the last thing I would necessarily worry about. If I don't feel comfortable with my complexion, then to me, she's off. Certain steps I go through just to make sure I'm comfortable with building the process. I'm weird. A lot of people want to see their eyes because those are the things that the people look at the most. But for me, I want to feel comfortable in my skin. Then, before I get started even more, there are things on Tamisha that I like to highlight, and that is my T-zone area. So, I use a take, a lighter cream, and I just go back in, and I highlight those areas, just to give me that constant look like, oh, you highlight it all the time. This is the area that I like about Tamisha. I like my T-zone area. For me, it's about blending. Taking the time and blending your foundation together so it's not a beginning or end. It gives you more, a more natural effect. Even though you can do it with the powders, I think it starts with the foundation. And I'm gonna always have a little light line right there, a little light line right there. So now that I've applied my foundation, now I have to lock everything with my powders. So I have one, two, three, four, five powders. <laughs> that I use to lock the foundation. So, the first powder is going to be my light powder. Everywhere I apply the highlighter is points that I want to stand out. Now, I have an overall powder. My overall powder pretty much just began to blend everything. Now, I use my dark powder to get closer to my skin complexion. Now, what I do is I'm getting ready to start contouring. Contouring is when you start to break your face down into different sections. So normally what I contour with is a dark, like a dark brown or a black, just in certain areas, like up under my cheeks and up here where my shadows would normally be at. The process is about to start. So this does not go on my cheeks, it goes up under where I would want my cheeks to be. This is creating the bone or the indent of your face. Once I'm comfortable with the blending of the darkness under my cheek, and sometimes it rides my cheek, it just depends on the look I'm going for. Then I go over it with a, normally with a burgundy or plum, just due to my complexion. Those colors work better for me, and I like to build my cheeks. I like to, I'm gonna have probably like three or four colors on them before it's over with. Then, to block. I block so my T-zone areas can stand out more. You want everything to blend. Like these are the actual corners where your natural dark spots will be anyway. So if you're taking a picture, it will always be highlighted in your T-zone. These other areas will be kind of shade it. Then I go back over it with an orange to kind of like give it a little light. So once that's done, put a little orange at the top. I'm putting eyeshadow on my T-zone because oftentimes your T-zone can fade. By adding a shadow in the pigment in the shadow, it's gonna allow it to stay. At this point, I'm going to line my lips first. So with my lips, I use a lip liner and I use a, a gold shadow. I usually put the gold shadow on first, then I go over with the lip liner, then I do a cream, and then I do a powder. I take the gold and I go on my natural line, my natural top lip line, and for the amount of gold that I'm putting on it, you won't even see it. It's just to create definition for your lips. Then I begin to draw my lip. The color I chose is like a burgundy auburn color. Merely cosmetics. It's just to make the lips pop a little bit. So now I'm going over with my brown, my cream brown, to kind of actually take the burgundy to a little brown. Now I'm gonna take a darker brown shadow to secure it, just to add definition. So when I come back to do my lips, they're already done. This is creating my shape. Then I take a little clown white 
and I put it in the middle of my lips for my highlighted color. If you notice, I only put clown white in the middle portion of my lips. So now I'm gonna start to contour my nose. I'm gonna break it down, make it a little narrow. And I use the start of my black shadow. The reason why I use the dark brown is because I go over with other colors. Everything does not have to be done with a brush. Sometimes it's good to take your finger and get in there and uh, help those colors to blend. I take a red, the red offsets the black so it kind of look warm and create skin-like definition shadows. Everything has a shadow. Keep in mind, I do a lot of repeating. Like I get the basics, then I go back up. I'm gonna move into my eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and start to build my eyeshadows. I do several things. I take a nice portion of the clown white and I just pat it. I blend it and I move it by patting it. Once you get that semi there, easy. You take a powder and you lock that. That way I don't have to go back and constantly add white to build it. I'm locking it into the clown white. So therefore anything else I do, I can take it down or build it up. Clown white is the basis of my eye. So it's gonna be on the inside of my eye. That goes there and I take my gold and I put it right on top. So I'm pretty much locking it in. So now I'm going to put my clown white on top of my lid. And that's merely to lock in whatever shadow I'm using. Now that I have my clown white on, I'm gonna go ahead and put my eyeshadow on. Just so happen my eyeshadow is white. I will now take a shadow and bring in my crease. I'm using a red now. My next color is going to be I like an orange, just orange, orangey tan to make it more earth tone for me. Now what I do is I put on a shimmer over my shadow. If you have any imperfections in your eyeshadow, you put a shimmer on and it's le less likely to be picked up. Now I'm going to expand my colors just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. So now I'm putting on mascara to get rid of any of the debris that has fallen on the lashes, but at the same time to enhance the lashes so they can stand out for the next step. I don't have a lot of lashes as you can see, but the six that I have, I like them to be <laughs> cooperative. So now that I've done my lashes, I'm getting ready to put my liquid liner on. My liquid liner goes from the middle of my eye back first, like toward the end of my actual lid. If you can get them perfect, congratulations. I can't, but I can only get them similar. Okay. Then I usually take a little black from the liquid liner and start my crease. I want it to be right in the crease area more than anywhere, heavy wise. And I usually just lock it in with the shadow and build from there. Not taking it too much to the front. Once I get it pretty much where I want it, I open it up. Going back to my liquid liner and I'm gonna do the bottom portion of my eyes. Then I go back over that with the shadow as well. So I've been doing this for 30 years and my techniques have improved. They haven't changed tremendously because what works for me works for me. Not to say that I'm old fashioned. I love the new way everyone is doing makeup, but makeup is makeup. It depends on the artist and how they approach the situation. It's like driving a car. Once you learn how to drive a car, you're gonna forever know how to drive the car. Now some drivers are better than others. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I look to learn new things, new techniques. Not to say I'm gonna always apply them, but I look to learn them. <laughs> it's good to know how to do stuff. I'm gonna use a cream to actually help me to shape my eyebrow. I'm gonna use a brown cream, then I'm gonna use a black cream, then I'm gonna use a burgundy pencil. Here we go. Going to the black shadow. The 
cream is locked, then I take my burgundy pencil and I just go over it to soften the color up. So now I go back over my shadow just with the white matte shadow. We're almost done, kids. We're gonna take a goal just to outline the top of our brows before we move any further. Now, with your nose is the trick. You take a white shadow and you bump it there. And I use a bumping in the bridge. But then I put a gold shadow on it to make it shiny. Okay. Lash time. Top, bottom. So I'm gonna put a little glue on my lashes. I usually start with my top lash because my top lash determines where my bottom lash is gonna go. Okay, so I am now filling in the divide. And I will go back over my T-zone with my middle powder now. <laughs> now, I'm getting ready to put on my shimmers. Okay, the first one was a solid one. The second one is like a loose one. That's pretty much it. Still want that area defined. Now, I'm going to put on my lips. I don't really try to go too dramatic with my lips because they're fairly large. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to keep them at a minimum. I'm gonna put an orange for my base color, which with the clown white, it does not appear orange. Then I go on top of it with a lighter color. Now I'm going to add a red matte lipstick. So I use the red and burgundy matte to lock this color in so I don't have to worry about it going anywhere. Then I go back over with my orange. Now my face is done, so I'm gonna go put on my look. I'll be right back. And this is it, my entrance look. I love this look because the red is bold. The couture is very me, it's very unpredictable, but at the same time, it is the first and the best impression that you get of Tanisha Iman. Voila, the perfect picture in an imperfect world. Look over here, the Drag Race YouTube channel is always bringing amazing content. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing.